So guys, I have the perfect example of bilateral ptosis. One side is masked by the worst side. So if you look at her upper lid, so right into the camera, you'll see that this upper lid looks droopier than that one. And this is just absolutely classic. They're actually both droopy. And when I say droopy, I'm not talking about the skin. I'm talking about the margin of the lid. On this side, it's covering the pupil pretty significantly. It's not fully open. And it looks like that side's pretty good. What's really happening is they're actually both droopy and the brain can only drive both eyes together. So they're both droopy. This one's less droopy than that one. And the brain is driving maximally and that's all it can get this one to open. But in that context, it's pretty much corrected this one. A rookie surgeon would come in here and fix the droop on that one eyelid only and watch what would happen. If we fix that droop, the brain relaxes its drive to keep that eye open and this one will fall. And we can actually simulate that. Can you see both eyes together? Watch, keep your eye on this one. Look, keep both, keep both eyes together, but audience, keep your eye on that one. Watch what happens to it as I lift this lid. Here we go. It drops, that one's dropping, and it rises. And it drops, do you see that? And it rises. So as this one's down, that one gets driven up. As I fix this one, that one gets let down. Isn't that cool? It's like a seesaw. So that is bilateral ptosis, but the bad side is masking the good side.